For over 20 years, I've dedicated my life to bringing you the very best selling, marketing, and business building strategies to keep your business thriving. Get ready to experience the success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show, episode 74. This is the second session on helping you become a lean, mean appointment setting machine. Today, I wanna to reveal six tips to help you communicate more effectively over the phone, getting a better result with even more confidence and impact for the customer. And I've got seven things I'd recommend you doing inside your environment to create the ultimate appointment setting environment. So let's jump in. We all know at the end of the day, communication is everything. How you feel on the inside radiates to the people on your outside through your words, through your tone, through your energy. And what we want is we want customers to feel good when we're on the phone. Think about it. I want my customers to feel good. So what do I know? I got to feel good. I got to message good. I got to bring the energy to cause customers to say, wow, Dan's infectious. I want to work with this guy. Like there's just something about him. I've, I've met a hundred real estate agents, but you know, she's the one. How do you create that over the phone? That's what I want to talk about today. I want you to win. You ready? So number one is you got to know your customer's pain and know their problem. We know that we solve problems for a profit. That's what we do. There's no inventory. So you're a buyer. I'm going to go find you a home. I'm going to solve your problem. You're a seller who wants to sell for top dollar in a marketplace that isn't demanding it. So you're looking for me to solve that problem, to market your home to the most you know, effective number of buyers in the marketplace and the agents that represent them. That's what we do. So every time I get on the phone, I'm thinking about what's their problem? Like, what is their issue? How am I gonna help them? Super effective that you frame your mind before you pick up the phone. What's their problem? How can I help? Number two, you gotta know your dialogues. You gotta practice. You gotta practice. I mentioned Chuck Daly last week. Um, I don't know if you've watched uh, ESPN's 30 for 30, but there was a wonderful, wonderful uh, deal on Allen Iverson, right? AI. And remember the big controversy over him, right? He got you know busted basically talking about practice, practice. You're complaining about me not practicing, and and even though that soundbite went made for wonderful news. It had nothing to do with how AI got to become the basketball player that he was, this little six foot dude who dominated the NBA universe because he practiced his face off. He had done it his entire life. And yet the whole segment, you know, that whole little thing in the news actually sort of twisted that whole thing. The reality was everyone that's great practices. Um, I was watching Shark Tank recently. I don't know if you've ever watched Shark Tank. I think it's a wonderful television show. There's not many things on TV that, you know, I, I think are educational and interesting or I can learn something. And I was sitting with my family, we're watching Shark Tank, and you've seen this, right? If you've ever watched the show, you see people get other, hi, my name is, and I'm looking for a 10% investment for $100,000, and here's the problem that I solve. And you can see when they practiced. It's obvious when they practice and it's obvious when they don't know what they're talking about don't know their information don't know the numbers and the sharks rah, attack well that time's exactly like you if you get on the phone and you don't know your dialogues and you don't know what your question you know the questions you're going to ask you don't know how they're going to respond right if you're in that situation you're putting yourself in harm's way so to become an appointment setting machine what does that mean you grab your script you read it like 10 times in a row before you get on the phone so the words sound like you so you don't sound like you're reading a script at someone or worse you're thinking about what to say Remember, the human mind can only have one dominant thought at a time. So do I want to be thinking about what I'm going to say or do I want to be thinking about what the customer's saying? Do I want to be listening intently for the subtle little nuances? Like, have you guys had any thoughts of selling? Well, and if I don't know what to say, then I'm like, well, do you know anybody who's anything about selling? Versus you hear the well and you say, I noticed you paused a little bit. It sounds like maybe you have had some thoughts. I'm, I'm just curious. You know, if you were to sell this home for top dollar, let's just say hypothetically, where would you guys move to? See, when I know what to say and I don't have to think about it, then I can focus all my energy on the customer and that's how you win. That's how you book more appointments. Number three, you gotta get to the point. Um, more often than not, you've seen this, right? You're following up on leads, you're following up on opportunities, or people are following up with you, right? Put, it, put it yourself 
as the customer for a minute, right? When someone calls you like, hey, so, you know, I just wanted to follow up and, you know, how are you and how are the kids and what's going on and how's business? Get to the point. We, we, none of us have excess amounts of time. So when you're actually reaching out to customers, looking to book more appointments, get right to it, right? Hey, I'm calling to schedule an appointment. I'm calling to schedule a time to meet. I just found you a house. I just found the perfect buyer for your home. What would be the best time for me to come down and list your house? Um, one of my old sales managers, big shout out to Tommy Wish, right? A seven time black belt champion who became an NLP sales trainer essentially, and then became my sales manager. Uh, he and Robert Stover were two of my early mentors in sales. And, and Tommy would say to me, look Tom, play a game, get on the phone, call a prospect, and just close. Like, don't beat around the bush. Just like, you know, just call and say, hi, I'm calling to book an appointment. And I thought, wow, that's startling. Like, that would be really awkward. He said, just try it. So a couple of times I would just try it and I was shocked. Like, what I learned was, especially like, let's just say I'm calling an expired listing as an example, right? So I call an expired listing. So, so Dan, you're an expired, I want you to role play. And so you're a person that tried to sell and it didn't work out and now I'm calling you. So ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, I'm looking for Dan. Yes, that's me. Dan, Tom Ferry, your new real estate agent. I'm calling to book an appointment. I saw that your home was listed for sale and it didn't work out and I'm calling to get it sold. What would be the best time for us to get together Tuesday at four or Tuesday at five? Tuesday at five. Now, he just said Tuesday at five. Now, guess what, my friends? I know one of my coaches, Lisa Doyle, is watching this and she's saying, Tom, you're giving my, one of my favorite scripts away. That's how good it is. But here's the deal, you ready? Sure, you might get rejected. Sure, someone might say, well, I don't want to book an appointment. What are you talking about? Like. Here's my point, my friends. People don't have a lot of time. We live in a texting culture, an email culture, a social culture. Our phone is dominating our life. Everyone, no one is saying they have too much time. When you wanna be effective, get to the point early when you're on the phone. I'm calling to schedule an appointment. I'm calling to get us you know, a meeting. I found the perfect house. I found the buyer, let's go. Number four, to be effective in terms of your communication, stand up. Why? Because your body controls your tonality and your emotional state. So if I want to be powerful over the phone, right? If I want to be powerful over the phone, I want to move my body in a powerful way, right? So here's the deal. Stand up. When you stand up, you and I both know, 55% of your total communication is the way you move your body, right? People hear you over the phone when you're moving your body, and they also hear when you're on the phone like this, hello, right? They hear that too. So you stand up, you move your body, 38% is your tone. And remember your body controls your tone. So for example, if I say to you, um, have you any thoughts of moving? Like, doesn't that just sound scary? Have you had any thoughts of moving? Have you guys have any thoughts of selling? Versus, have you guys had any thoughts of selling? Have you had any thoughts of selling? And just the head nod impacts my tonality. And by the way, if I'm standing with you face to face, have you had any thoughts of selling? Versus, have you guys had any thoughts of selling? Everything about that makes me nervous. No one's gonna respond yes to that. So you wanna stand up because it controls your tonality. It also gives you power and you wanna be powerful over the phone and bring that positive energy to cause customers to say yes. Number five, speaking of standing up, when you're over the phone, got your headset on, OTP, here's the bummer. We have five senses. When I'm over the phone, how many senses are working for me? Think about it, only one out of five, right? I can't say, uh, you know, Mr. Prospect, um, can you smell what I'm talking about? Can you taste what I'm experiencing? Can you see what I'm saying? Now maybe they're visual and they might be able to create a visual picture in their mind, but the reality is when I'm talking over the phone, I've only got one over the phone, hearing. So guess what? I wanna be clear, I wanna be articulate, I want to be well rehearsed and practiced in my dialogues because every word matters and a subtle little adjustment, talk a little bit louder. Even though the telephone is extraordinary today, we've all been on the phone with someone when you knew clearly it was a bad landline or a bad cell signal or a bad headset that made him sound like wah, 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 like the old Snoopy's parents, right? So talk a little louder over the phone because remember, energy is infectious and people want to do business with people that they like, that they think are passionate about getting the job done. So we want to stand and we want to remember we're only 20% effective over the phone, so talk a little louder and be very clear in your dialogue. And the last one, number six, is one of my favorites. So you'll wanna jot this down, I'll say it a little slow. 
my experience is over the phone, face to face, in all forms of negotiation, whether I'm trying to book an appointment or close the sale, people don't take action when there's too much fear in the way or their fears have not been addressed. So several years ago, I started using three questions, acknowledging that, again, people don't move forward unless the fear gets removed. So question number one, I want to ask every prospect, if I'm struggling to get the appointment, if I know that they want to move and they're just not certain if they want to meet with me yet, or I'm in the middle of negotiating and, and I'm saying, look, this is the highest price the buyers are willing to pay, Mr. Seller, what would you like to do, right? Like there are three questions you could ask that help take that customer through the fear, right, to get to a state of neutrality, to then get to a state of possibility. And when you do that with a prospect, you get them to acknowledge and remove the fears, you get them to a state of neutrality, and then you get them to get into an inspired state, that's when they take action, when they see what's possible, when they realize that they want it, that they understand that you're the gal, you're the guy, then they take action and book appointments and say yes. So what are the three questions? What's the worst case scenario of having me over? I mean, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I know you're, you know, you're talking to lots of different agents and I know you got a friend of the business. What's the worst case scenario in meeting with one more trusted expert in the marketplace? What's the worst case scenario? And they go, well, I, you know, time and I wouldn't want to hurt my friend's feelings and, and I'm not going to negate it. I'm not going to argue the points. It's super important. I just want him to express it and get it out. And then I say, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Let me ask you a, a different question. What's the most likely scenario? I, I come over, you've got a friend of the business, you've got other people you know, but to hear another trusted advisor, what's the most likely experience? What's gonna happen? They're like, well, you know, maybe we'll get a different point of view. You know, we might hear something different. Maybe, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe we've got the problem of no problems. Maybe we don't even know like who we should be talking to. And in that moment, and this is what's so great about these questions, I use these all the time and I hear those kind of answers all the time. I hear, no, well, I guess there's probably no downside to it, so maybe we should get together. The moment they go from no to open to the possibility, the sales process has begun, then I ask the last question. So let me ask you, we get together, what's the best case scenario? What's the best case scenario? And they say, well, I mean, we, we, we like you, we figure out a way to do more business together, we, you know, maybe we sell our home for even more money. Exactly. So what would be the best time for us to get together, Monday or Tuesday at four? I acknowledge their fears, I get them to a place of neutrality, and then I inspire them or create possibility for people to move forward, and that's how you book a lot of appointments. So please write down the questions. What's the worst case scenario? What's the most likely scenario? And what's the best case scenario? Now, I know I'm giving you a lot, but I've got some tips now. I want to transition away from these points around communication to seven easy things you can do in your environment to make it more conducive to be effective over the phone. So let's take a look. Number one, it's good to have an appointment tracker. So I think having a visual like year at a glance calendar and every day you book an appointment, you write the name on it. You don't have to give all the details so all the other agents in the office know who you're going after. I mean, I get you, but no, instead you just write down Joneses or you write down, uh, you know, banana, right? It's banana street, who knows what it is. Or you just put the number one. But here's the point, ready? When you start to visually track it, you start to see momentum. The more momentum you get, the more you wanna do it. You with me on this? It's really powerful. Number two, you wanna create an appointment setting shrine. So watch this. Uh, years ago, I created and continued to create, like the, the, the black wall over here, guys, like that's my business shrine, if you will. By shrine, I mean, imagine you're at your desk and you go buy from Staples, one of those presentation boards, it opens up like this, and when you open it up, in the middle, you've got all your most important dialogues. Here's my questions from my past customers, here's a few objection handlers, here's my open house follow-up, here's my online lead follow-up, all your most important dialogues right there in the middle of your appointment setting shrine. And when you open it up to the right, maybe there's a photo of your family and your top three goals for the year and how much money you wanna save as an example of visual representation of why you're doing this. And maybe you're on the other side, you've got that mirror because we're all reminded to smile over the phone and that it's infectious when you smile. Now, here's the deal. Like, I would make it a ceremony. I'd be like, okay, it's nine o'clock. This is my hour of power appointment setting time. I'm standing in my environment. I light the ceremonial candle in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy appointment setting ghost. And I, oh, 
And I open up the shrine and I see all my scripts. I see my family. I see my goals. You with me on this? I, there's a mirror there or a reminder or something visual that gets me inspired. But what I'm really doing is I'm controlling my environment. I'm not letting the outside distractions distract me, right? Get me off track. Instead, I'm right here. Scripts, family, goals, mirror, phone. Let's book some appointments. Does that make sense? Number three, eliminate all distractions, which we just discussed, but consider also if there's paperwork everywhere, right? If I'm looking down at my voicemail light, bleep, 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 bleep. If the internet is in front of me, if email is up, if the stock market's crashing or going up, ah, right? That's all going to be a distraction and stop me for being powerful over the phone. Number four, stand up versus sit, which we've discussed in depth. Number five, a little bit of music, man, Depeche Mode, uh, your own personal Jesus, right? When he, the, the line when he says, pick up the receiver and I'll make you a believer. I can't tell you how many times, I, I, I get goosebumps thinking about it, how many times I booked appointments to that song. Or uh, I'm going way old school. My brother Matthew and I used to have a VCR. Remember VCRs? We had a VCR in our office and we would play Star Wars films. And all day long, we'd be on the phone, like someone would give us an objection, we'd be like, like, I can appreciate that. And let me ask you a question. And as silly as that may sound, I cut my teeth in my career making phone calls seven, eight, nine hours a day. You had to make the environment fun or it became a grind. Does that make sense? And I fell in love with the phone because I created an environment that was fun, that was conducive to high performance. Now, having a plant is always a good idea, a living plant, you know, name it client relationships. Name it appointment setting. And if I see that plant dying inside your office, I know what you're doing metaphorically and of course physically inside your business. And then the last one is you got to have a good headset. It's so funny even just taking this off now, I can hear everything better because this is such a good headset. It, it kills all the noise around me. This helps the distractions. Does that make sense? So I would ask you, of the seven things you can do inside your environment, what's one or two changes you're gonna make. I wanna see some comments. What are some changes you're going to make? Maybe post if this, you're watching this on Facebook, send me a photo of your environment. I wanna see what it looks like. So put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram, put it on Twitter, wherever you want, but I wanna see what your environment looks like. And then maybe in the next few days, I'll do a Facebook mentions and I'll walk around my office and you'll see all my salespeople standing up, goals in front of them, headsets on, doing all the things that we're discussing and it's no wonder that they're all high producing, very powerful, high performance, over the phone salespeople just like you. So thanks so much for watching. Remember always your strategy matters and now more than ever, your ability to control your environment and communicate effectively absolutely rules. Thanks for watching. If you love what you're seeing here, then click the button below to join our online community absolutely free. Thanks so much. <laughs>